Hi. Seems like I only just uploaded one of these, right? Um, how time flies. Maybe I'll even wrap up my match reading at some point in April. Who can, who can say? Anything could happen. Really, if you think about it. So this is my TBR for April. Like a lot of people on booktube, I'll be doing the Aurelium Spring Equinox Magical Readathon created by G from Book Roast. Full confession. Um, I'm kind of a bad participant. After completing the prompts for The Novice Path, I just kind of didn't really think about it since September until like now. And I was just like, oh yeah, I'll like create my character at some point. And when the gear up happened and everyone was doing it, I was like, mm, I don't really have room in my TBR for that. So like, you know, I'll, I'll look at it another time. I don't, I can't make any decisions right now. I'll just, I'll get to it later. And now the spring equinox semester is here. I cobbled together a character, um, two actually, they're girlfriends, and I did some quick catch up uh, for the gear up, and then I spent a bunch of time trying to decide what my calling was. I think I've narrowed it down to necromancer, alchemist, scribe, or Feywild cartographer, but I couldn't decide. So once again, I'm deferring that decision and I'm just going to do all the prompts and I will definitely get around to picking a calling before the autumnal equinox round comes. I mean, like definitely. For alchemy, I've got to read a book featuring romance. For that, I'm going to read Delia Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. I haven't actually read anything from Ashley Herring Blake before, but I do also have Girl Made of Stars on my shelves. This is a queer rom-com and I believe there's a like character returning to their hometown element. I'm not a huge fan of the romance genre, but I do tend to have more luck with it when it's queer. I'm just not particularly interested in what the straights are up to. So I'm very curious to see how I get on with this author's adult release. So for animal studies, you have to do a quick read. I'm trying to make sure I read at least one poetry collection a month. It just seems to be quite good for my mental health to do that. So for this, I'm gonna be reading Bright Dead Things by Ada Limone. This is actually a very recent purchase. So I'm kind of proud of myself to be getting to it like within a month of buying it. That's well done me. I haven't actually read any of Ada Limone's other collections but I specifically bought Bright Dead Things because it starts with the poem How to Triumph Like a Girl which is one I like to return to and read when I, I feel like I need like a boost. It's very good. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. It's a good poem and maybe you need some girl horse energy in your life. For Art of Illusion you need to read a book with a trope that you like. So for that I'm going to be reading The Maid by Nita Prose. Obviously I haven't talked about this on my channel before because this is like my second video, but I don't think I've mentioned it in any sprints either. But I love an orderly cleaning lady solving mysteries. Yes, that is a trope. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many you can find if you get like really into it and go digging, which I did at one point when I first fell in love with the Lily Bard series by Charlene Harris. So I've been very keen to read The Maid since I first started hearing buzz for it because a hotel cleaner and a locked room mystery, that sounds really good. So for astronomy, you need to read a book from the top of your TBR list. So for that, I'm gonna be reading Summer Suns by Lee Mandelo. I actually intended to read Summer Suns last month, so that feels pretty top of my TBR. Plus, I don't want to like let it return to the library unread because I'm keen for it. I have heard some like kind of mixed reviews lately, but I'm still keen to read it. I love horror, I love Southern Gothic, and I'll take a chance on almost anything that Tor.com publishes. For Conjuration, the prompt is to read something with a source of light on the cover. I'm still doing the Sookie Stackhouse read-along, so there's just gonna be one of these in basically every TBR this year. In April, it's book four, which is Dead to the World by Charlene Harris. Also, I wanna be clear, I do know that the moon doesn't emit light, but since the light it reflects from the sun can be a source of light during the night. I figured I could count it. I did kind of agonize about it though. So that's where I'm at. For demonology, the prompt is to read a book with the word shadow in the title. Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia wasn't like a super high priority on my TBR list, but apparently I don't actually have that many books on my radar with the word shadow in the title. I have read from Silvia Moreno Garcia before and I'm keen to again. I'm very interested in the elements of Mexican folklore that are meant to be mixed into this, but it also sounds like the protagonist goes on some kind of like adventure journey thing. 
and I sometimes struggle with those sorts of stories. For elemental studies, book under 100 pages. Unsurprisingly, since I've been recommending it around um, as a good option for fitting in the buzzword prompt, it's only about 18 pages long, so it definitely fits for the prompt. I love Tor.com short stories. I love little free libraries. <laughs> um, so it seems like an obvious choice. For spells and incantations, the prompt is short story or stories or essay or collection of essays. For this, I'm going to read Small Places by Tiffany Allen. This is a debut short story collection from this author. I've been hearing some like really promising things about it. I believe all of the stories are about people in small towns. And I've gotten the impression that at least some of the stories are kind of weird and unsettling. And I like that. For Art of History, the prompt is an earth setting. Earth setting seems pretty easy to fulfill. I'm going to be using The Yield by Tara June Winch. I mean, as a bonus, it's specifically set in Australia, which is the part of Earth that I'm most familiar with. I actually bumped this one onto my TBR after I saw that Mel from A Book Fiend Named Mel would be reading it in April. I've had it sitting on my shelf for a while. I really love Tara June Winch's writing in Swallow the Air, so I decided to jump on an impromptu buddy read. In this book we see a character returning home to her mob's land after her grandpa passes away. Before he died he was trying to make a record of all he could remember of their language and stories. I'm pretty sure Winch herself is Wiradjuri, but I'm not sure what part of the land this book is specifically set. I love books about language, translation, and storytelling. Weirdly not as much about like books and bookstores and reading, so I'm not going to put this one off any longer. For inscription, the prompt is an intimidating read. I don't know if you know this about me, but I kind of hate long books. I need a lot of convincing that a story couldn't be better told in less pages. So I'm going to read A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I feel like I don't need to introduce this book. I'm practically the last to read it and people seem kind of split on whether it's authentically deeply moving or kind of exploitatively cruel gay misery porn. I can't tell because I haven't read it yet, but I guess I'll get back to you. For lore, the prompt is mythology inspired. Libby, what are you doing? Animal. Because djinn are figures from mythology, I'm going to read A Master of Djinn by P. Jelly Clark. I read the short stories and novella from uh, the Dead Djinn series in March, so I'm keen to continue on to the first novel length work in this series. The series is set in an alternate early 20th century steampunk Cairo, and A Master of Djinn, along with most of the other stories in the series, are like magical crime procedurals. The characters are wonderful. I love Fatima. I will confidently read anything P. Jelly Clark puts out knowing I'm in safe hands. For psionics and divination, um, the prompt is a book set in the future. For that, I'm going to be reading A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. I'm not 100% clear if this is explicitly set in the future, but I know it's pitched as within the solar punk subgenre of science fiction, which is all about exploring ideas about the future and sustainability, etc. So even if the setting isn't explicit, it is about the future. Also, this has a character who is a tea monk, which always makes me think of the tea witches in the Marielda season of Friends at the Table. And I always want to be thinking about the Marielda season of Friends at the Table. I'm way behind on Sunk Fiel though, so no spoilers. For restoration, the prompt is a book featuring healers. When you're reading The Old Drift by Namwali Circle, I found this to be a really hard prompt to fulfill. It's hard to know from blurbs of a book if it could be considered to feature healers. The Old Drift by Namwali Circle is one of my picks for Invisible Cities in April. It's like a multi-family, multi-generational saga set in Zambia between 1903 and 2023. So it's both historical fiction and sci-fi. And I think that some of the sci-fi elements relate to like medical technology. So that's why I'm hoping it will work for this prompt. It is also really long though. So please send help. The final subject is shape-shifting. And the prompt is a creature with claws on the cover. For that, I'm going to be reading Sundial by Katrina Ward. I had mixed to mostly positive feelings about The Last House on Neela Street, so I'm keen to pick up Katrina Ward's newest psychological horror novel. My copy has a coyote on the cover, so it fulfills the prompt. But you might also have seen the cover with the cool vaporwave color scheme and a skull. It also has a snake, but they don't have claws. They don't even have arms. The only thing is, I do think that this 
explores a toxic mother-daughter relationship, so I'm going to try and approach with caution and allow myself a mental health DNF if necessary. So those are all the classes. Uh, let's hope it will be easier for me to read all of these than it was to try and pick a calling. I'll also be reading Jingo by Terry Pratchett as the next book for the Discworld by thematic grouping faction of Tearing Through Time, as opposed to the Discworld by chronological publishing order faction. Look, it's a whole thing. Don't worry about it unless you want to come read Discworld with us, in which case there'll be a link below. So that's pretty much everything and it's definitely gonna get dark soon. So bye! <laughs>